And good afternoon, everyone. Just in a few seconds, you'll start seeing the opening slide of our today's uh, presentation. So bear with us and uh, make sure that you turn on the volume and, uh, and, um, and turn your sides to the screens, the bright screens of um, your computers. Uh, so here we are. I think you should be able now to see the opening slide of our presentation. We're looking forward uh, to sharing with you some of the insights. But first and foremost, uh, what I wanted to say, New Year, everyone. Uh, we're in 2021. And today, January 14th, we're uh, starting our new annual uh, series of webinars um, hosted by Rigor, digital oil field platform for oil field service and rental companies. And through this series of the webinars, we're going to be sharing with you insights, interesting speakers, and topics about not only our product, but how we help our clients uh, serve uh, in the market, in the competitive market of the oil field services and rentals, and um, making lives of both their clients and um, the providers of the services better and easier. So today's topic, uh, the opening topic of this year's webinar is rigor and QuickBooks integration. Uh, and... I did not introduce myself, however. Uh, so here's, I am Nikolai, uh, and I'm VP of Business Development and Marketing here at Trigger. So today's agenda and presenters are myself uh, and Glad Kobitz, VP of Operations. So we're gonna talk about the main benefits of having the integration set up between Rigor and, uh, and QuickBooks. Uh, we'll also touch on the two different versions of QuickBooks because some of our clients uh, are using uh, either desktop or online version. Uh, we'll talk about the trends as well. Uh, and then we'll dive a little bit into the higher level uh, details of, of the integration process. So we'll talk about the data exchange protocols, we'll talk about the requirements, and uh, show how the workflow uh, of the uh, integration exporting document from one system into another one works. So without further ado, uh, let's get going. So integration benefits, and I will touch really quickly on them. Um, obviously, in this interconnected world, uh, none of the systems that companies are using is sufficient to do all the things because we've been there and done that, so to speak. Uh, so monolithic uh, systems are very rigid and inflexible, and by that are limiting the operations. So instead, we have uh, approached the the new world of our customers as multi-system integrated uh, platform and uh, approach. And when, uh, when we do the setup of the uh, rigor in, uh, in their specific uh, type or uh, configuration. So rigor as a system uh, is a cloud-based platform. So we integrate with pretty much every, every system that is out there that has an API or a custom API. Uh, and we specifically already to the date integrate with the key ones that a client asked us to make sure that we build integration with. So uh, from the typical office suite, uh, such as an Outlook and Excel, the key ones that people want to be able to use while they're using Rigor to do the rentals and, um, to do the rentals and the services uh, management in the system. So electronic documents, Signing is an important one as well because we're in the digitalization era. So PandaDoc and the DocuSign are two also available integration that we can set up and ensure that there's no need to send documents, uh, printed documents and have the uh, signatures collected manually. So you can digitally sign uh, pretty much any document in the system when you need to share and have it approved. And uh, the, we also integrate with, uh, which very typical uh, for the oil field services market, uh, Oildex and Cortex open and voice and Cortex system. So where, this is where you have access to the, to the client portal of yours if you're an oil field service company. So we integrate on the accounting side with QuickBooks and Sage, as well as have a sales integration system such as Anapolara and ERP such as Microsoft Business Central is also part of the integration suite. So pretty much we can connect and build that puzzle of your business operations using different systems, making sure that every information piece as required flows from one uh, system to another, enabling uh, team members to perform their jobs. So advanced API integrations and data import and data export are the key uh, sort of uh, elements of how we build integration. So uh, let me just touch real quick on what do you get by doing uh, or by having the integration with Rigor, uh, with other systems. What do you get is actually uh, is a, is a, is a, is a um, sort of, is a comprehensive picture of 
what kind of integrations are more popular uh, in when we do the setup uh, for the accounting systems? And uh, so what we wanted to bring up to most of your attention is that so a lot of companies that are working with are still smaller and medium sized companies. So they use a lot of um, and many of them are using QuickBooks just because it's a very simple startup uh, accounting uh, accounting system. So that's why it's important to for us to have it all available to our clients. Uh, and what we see, however, is the trend is a lot of majority are using the, um, um, the QuickBooks desktop version. So you can see more than 50%. However, in the recent year, we see there's increase in the QuickBooks online. And it's generally we treat as a trend of companies that are now uh, creating the um, uh, sort of environment in which information flows through the cloud specifically. So we've seen a boost in uh, a number of requests to connect systems uh, such as Rigor and the QuickBooks online. Uh, at the same time, uh, we see that Sage is, uh, uh, which is a pitch tree in the U.S. version, is very popular as well. Uh, in some regions, it's primarily probably driven by how the Sage uh, Salesforce applies their efforts in specific regions in the United States or here in Canada, and and in a very small kind of um, segment of uh, the chart of, the, of this pie chart, you can see uh, so larger systems uh, are not as popular to be integrated simply because not every company likes to use the larger system, especially at the very beginning. Uh, however, having the integration allows us to enable growth for the some, for some of the companies. You can start uh, integrating rigor with a smaller system such as QuickBooks, and then you can move up as your business grows and have integration set up with the Business Central ERP system. So that, uh, that brings up uh, the complexity of the uh, operations on the client's end and uh, allows them to manage more information in between the two systems. So one of the key benefits that we see clients uh, reap off of when they use uh, uh, when they use the integration with one of the accounting systems that we have set up and QuickBooks specifically, especially because it's a majority ones and it's very typical one when we do the setup initially is that there's no more manual data entry. So that actually leads to a small number of errors and it's very you know standard and typical. So you don't have any more worry about having a mistype mistyped uh, number in a one invoice or another when you have to do the uh, manual transfer and re-entering information between the two systems. Uh, on a larger scale of things, uh, if you retype a number, it's just not a number. It usually impacts the financial information of the system. So then in that case, you just, um, you have more correct data in your accounting system for your p &L or other reports that you run on an ongoing basis as an accountant. So you don't do the double entry. So that's just not only, it's not manual anymore, but there's no double entry simply because you just, integration does the work for you. So it becomes faster. And that brings us to the point of the faster data processing and turnaround times when you have to process the invoice uh, or all the income and information for that matter that relates to the finances. So you type it once and it gets uh, from one system to another by click of a button. This brings to another uh, uh, related benefit of increased productivity. So all of a sudden you have spent less time on some of the tasks and can do more. So that's a great thing for any business because uh, productivity is one of the key business drivers for many. And um, that brings to the main uh, to the main benefit of especially uh, small businesses uh, is that they can scale up pretty quickly. So you can start small, but once you have the integrated system set up in your, uh, in your organization, you can easily then bring more people to do real work, not the paperwork uh, that was very typical when you were running non-digital operation primarily. So all in all, uh, integration between Rigor and QuickBooks is very beneficial, not only for small business, but for large businesses as well. But small ones is a good place to start. So QuickBooks integration it is, and how Rigor works with it is going to be the next chapter of the presentation. Okay, uh, great. Thank you, Nikolai, for this uh, great introduction uh, to the topic. And hello, everybody. My name is Gleb Kobitz, and uh, I'm VP of operations here in Rigor. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how uh, specifically integrations work for in, in the rigor instance uh, for the QuickBooks online. Uh, but let me start first with a uh, general question that we get usually from our clients or from new prospects, uh, whether they need to decide on, on what is better or, or what, what will suit better their needs, uh, either QuickBooks desktop version or online version. 
uh, generally speaking, there is no there is no right or, or wrong choice. Uh, it is not about what is better or what what's worse or what we need to choose. It it's just uh, the selection uh, between those two versions of the QuickBooks application or QuickBooks system is more of the uh, purpose. So what you'd like to get from the system, how you'd like to use it, and what's your company size. Because the basic distinction between QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop is that uh, it serves uh, larger, uh, different scales of organizations. So uh, typically QuickBooks Online uh, is used better for the uh, small to mid-sized companies, but also larger companies can use QuickBooks Online uh, application. Uh, and uh, traditionally, QuickBooks desktop application is designed to serve the purposes and goals of the larger organizations and enterprise level companies. Uh, speaking of the uh, easiness of use or access to, to, the, to those both, both applications, QuickBooks Online will be accessible anywhere and anytime because it's cloud-based uh, application and every user can access it uh, at any given uh, moment of time by just using the web browser at the computer. Uh, the only thing that you need to have is the internet connection, basically. And it's secure connection through the, uh, through the uh, system of uh, credentials. Uh, but QuickBooks desktop application uh, is installed locally on the computer uh, on the laptop or computer, and also it can be installed on the remote server, um, which is uh, which can be hosted by a third-party provider, uh, and the rigger can uh, integrate with both remote server or uh, local computer. Now, uh, when we talk about QuickBooks Online, uh, it allows you to build more integrations and automations with uh, other software. Uh, but QuickBooks Desktop has more features. It's more advanced in, in the same features that are presented in both applications, but in QuickBooks Desktop, uh, it's, it's more developed. And also it provides you with, uh, with a wider list of reports available. Uh, QuickBooks Online is easier to learn and use. It's more intuitive and interfaces are clear. Um, and uh, QuickBooks Desktop, since it's a um, more developed application and advanced use application, uh, they define it as a, that it has a steep learning curve. So it's a little bit difficult or a little bit more difficult to, to learn and to get the system rather than QuickBooks Online. And the pricing module are also different. So uh, whatever you prefer, you, you may choose between those two, but uh, QuickBooks Online is uh, basically is a monthly subscription uh, model and QuickBooks Desktop uh, can be paid uh, based on the license fees or yearly subscription. So speaking about the rigor integration difference with QuickBooks Desktop and Online, uh, there are a few. Actually, when we exchange the data, it's a different ways how the data is exchanged. In terms of the QuickBooks Desktop, we send the data from Rigor to QuickBooks Desktop application only. It's just like we call one-way integration. So it's just one-way data exchange uh, for the QuickBooks Desktop application. Uh, and we can send uh, different uh, documents, but we will talk about this precisely a little bit later. In terms of the QuickBooks Online, uh, it's a two-way integration. So we can send data from Rigger to QuickBooks Online, and we can also receive data from QuickBooks Online into Rigger application. Now let's talk about the types of data that we exchange between those two systems. So first of all, I, I need to mention that uh, we exchange the data on the document level. So we basically exchange the documents between two systems. It's not accounting accounts based exchange, it's a document based exchange. So typically we send rental invoices or sales invoices from Rigger to QuickBooks application. And in QuickBooks, it's uh, relatively, it's an invoice document. Uh, purchase invoices can also be sent from Rigger to the QuickBooks online. And in QuickBooks Online, this document is called Bill. 
And also we can send the information about the company or customer or vendor uh, to the QuickBooks application. And uh, in your QuickBooks, it will be a customer for sure. Now, speaking about the details of what kind of data fields we migrate from Rager to QuickBooks online, uh, there are a few. So rental invoices and sales invoices have pretty much the same set of data. And uh, we usually send general information about the document, for example, document number and date of the document. And in, in the QuickBooks invoice, it's the same types of fields. Uh, now, when we talk about the company name, we connect the companies in rigor with those in QuickBooks online. And by using the ID as a connector point, we send information about this ID from rigor to QuickBooks. And then inside of the QuickBooks, the system finds this company ID number and replaces the information in the document itself for these uh, fields meaning customer name and billing address. So it just pu pulls the data from inside the uh, QuickBooks Online uh, database and inserts it in the invoice document. Uh, then uh, coming down to the uh, revenue amounts, we send from rigor item quantity. So revenue item quantity, price and, and total amount. So it will be exactly reflected in the uh, QuickBooks invoice as it has in the rear. And also about taxes. So we send the tax schedule name. So we connect tax schedules in rigor with sales tax items in QuickBooks. And then we send this information and also we send in, in total tax amount on the, on the document level not by uh, line items, but on the document level. And the final portion of the information that will be exported from Rigger to QuickBooks Online is the classes information. So in QuickBooks Online, it's just one field class, but in Rigger, you can connect your QuickBooks classes to different dimensions. It can be either department, or division or line of business. So if you're using the rigor application currently, you, you probably know that you have several, um, several fields in your rental service agreement when you allocate information between departments, divisions, line of businesses. And uh, one of these can be connected to your classes in QuickBooks, just to give you uh, some portion of the analytics, like how much revenue a specific class generates for a certain period of time. Now, uh, coming to the purchase invoices, when we send purchase invoices from regard to QuickBooks Online, uh, it's gonna be exported to the bill document. It's pretty much the same information, but uh, the difference is that we have due dates and terms of payments on the purchase invoices in both systems. So we exchange this information and pretty much the same stays um, for the item, uh, revenue item amounts, sales tax information and departments uh, and classes. And also we can exchange information about your customers. So we can pull the information from QuickBooks to Rigger or even send it from Rigger to QuickBooks. So whenever you create a new customer in Rigger, you can send this information to QuickBooks or vice versa. Company name, billing address, shipping address, email and phone number for the company can be sent uh, over to uh, another system. Uh, now let's talk about the uh, requirements uh, to the integration uh, and settings that we set up when we do the integration process. So before we start doing the integration and we connect both system, we usually ask our clients to ensure that uh, certain information is checked and, and verified before we connect and we map information between two systems. So first of all, the, one of the most important is the list of clients or customers in QuickBooks. So uh, that's a strict requirement that these two lists should match exactly in, in, in terms of the names uh, because it's automatic connection and automatic mapping. So we pull the data from QuickBooks online system into rigor and uh, automatically all these names should be matched. If that happens, that for some reasons the names are different, so it wouldn't be matched, 
And in this case, in the rigor system, a new customer will be created when we do these integration settings. So it means that you have to double check the connection after the integration settings. And uh, just to make sure that you are using the right customers in the regular system when you create new jobs and generate invoices for customers, just to make sure that it will be properly transferred over to the QuickBooks system. Then you have to go uh, through your vendor suppliers list to see if you don't have any duplicates or if all the names are correct. Then you also need to check rental items, names, services, goods, and materials. Uh, these ones are one of the most important also because we connect the revenue items in rigor with the revenue items in QuickBooks. So information will be exchanged on that level and that should match also pretty precisely. So we can connect multiple revenue items from rigor to one revenue item in QuickBooks. So for example, if you in have um, grouped items or higher level revenue items in QuickBooks, we can uh, merge a few revenue items from rigor to the QuickBooks ones, not vice versa. Also will be done for tax items and classes. So it will be matched between uh, together and information will flow uh, based on that mapping. And also we usually suggest to check invoice template layout in QuickBooks online system uh, prior to exporting invoices from rigor because you probably need to clearly understand and uh, have um, relevant expectations of what kind of inf information will be sent from rigor to QuickBooks. If you have some kind of custom fields on the QuickBooks online invoice, so we need to discuss it first before we export information just to not lose uh, any, any portion of data while we do the export. Now, how the general and actual integration process looks like, it's the several steps. So usually when we connect systems, one of our uh, rigor team members uh, connects to QuickBooks Online during the online Zoom meeting because we need to have the uh, access to your QuickBooks Online system just uh, for this purpose, just to connect systems and match all the uh, information lists. And you can provide us just with a temporary or test account just to access your uh, QuickBooks Online application. Then we will establish the integration connection uh, then we verify that mapping of revenue items, clients, vendors, classes, and taxes are done correctly. And we will do the uh, test run for one of the invoices in the rigor system. So again, you need to have at least a couple invoices generated in the rigor system. So we have at least uh, a few documents that we can run a test on. And then once the expert is completed successfully, we finalize the integration, we close uh, all the settings, and we sign out from your QuickBooks Online application. So, and then you can uh, just close this account or change the password so we won't connect to your QuickBooks application anymore. And actually we don't need this connection. So we won't have any access to your QuickBooks system. So we came to the actual export workflow step. So, once all the settings are done, once the integration is established, how we actually export invoices from Rigor to QuickBooks Online. Let me explain that in a, in a few steps. And on the next slide, I'll show you uh, the demo video, how, how it's done uh, in, in real life. But uh, just in a few words, uh, you have to create and post invoice in Rigor. So it will be an active document in Rigor. Then you just open the export tool in the regular application in the oil field rentals menu. So you will locate this export tool. You select the time range for which you'd like invoices to be exported. And you select a particular invoices or, or all invoices for this time range uh, for the export. And you click export button. And then in a few seconds, you can open your QuickBooks online application and search for the invoices that you've just recently exported. Then the final step is just to double check all the details in your QuickBooks online application for the exported invoices and see that 
everything is exported correctly. Now let's take a look at the uh, export um, actions itself. When triggers integrated with QuickBooks Online, you can export all your invoices directly from, from Rigger to QuickBooks. So when you have all the invoices generated in Rigger, you can go and export them. So only specific users with the assigned right to do that is able to export uh, invoice from Rigger to QuickBooks. So the user should go to all field rentals, scroll down and select export data. Here you can select the specific uh, date range for which you want to export the invoices and you will get the list of all invoices for that date range. You can use the filters to select specific invoices. When you're ready to export, you just select the invoices which you want to export and click export. Invoice gets exported in a few moments and you can go right to QuickBooks to check your invoice. So let's update the page of QuickBooks online. And here we can see the invoice already in QuickBooks. So invoice gets all the details from the regular invoice, the customer, billing address, all the item lines and so on. So when invoice is exported from Rigger to QuickBooks, you can see it in the invoice that it gets checkmark exported. So usually when invoice is exported, it gets locked from the changes from editing this invoice in Rigger. And only specific users has the right to uncheck if needs some changes or to check it back if it's if it requires uh, this specific check mark. So that's how invoices are exported from Rigger to QuickBooks. All right, so uh, I, I will just uh, reiterate maybe intro that uh, once your invoice gets exported and gets this check mark exported, it actually prevents uh, any user from exporting the same invoice again. So the, the system, the Rigger system will uh, filter the invoices uh, for the export and it will exclude invoices that are already exported. So you, you will be safe uh, with not uh, double export the same kind of information uh, to the QuickBooks online system. And now uh, we've come to the our Q&A section where you can answer any questions uh, regarding this topic and uh, I'll be able to answer them. Yes, thank you very much, Gleb. And uh, indeed, please go ahead and ask any questions that you may have. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we have, um, so you can type them up in a Q&A, but just to make your life a little easier, we have a few questions that are typical when we work with an integration uh, or on integration projects. So let me um, read them out and Gleb will address them one by one. So first, how can we connect general ledger accounts? Right, that's that's a common question that comes from uh, usually from the accounting team uh, of the client uh, because uh, it's uh, maybe a little bit of misconception of the integration points uh, between Rigger and QuickBooks. So answering this question, I would state that we don't connect uh, general ledger accounts with the Rigger ones because the Rigger system is the operational system. So it has a lots of information about the particular job. It's not only about the accounting or financial information, it also fits the operational departments and uh, service departments with general kind of details about the jobs. So we don't connect ledger accounts, we connect revenue items and customers and taxes and vendors. So we exchange information on that level. But then when information is sent from Rigger to QuickBooks, then inside of the QuickBooks, this information is allocated between accounts based on your setup in the QuickBooks. So you just get a new invoice in your QuickBooks application and either it's a rental invoice or purchase invoice or sales invoice, accordingly, the information will be split or just allocated to your particular accounts on the general ledger. 
So you use accounting um, system for your accounting purposes and you use rigor for your operations management purposes and generate invoices as well. Absolutely right. Correct. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Gleb. So the second commonly quest, uh, asked question is, can we transfer invoices from QuickBooks online to rigor? Um, short answer is no. So we usually transfer invoices from rigor to QuickBooks, not vice versa, because Again, um, rigor invoice may have much more information than the QuickBooks ones. So, and since the QuickBooks has less information, we actually uh, limit the rigor invoice um, while we exchange it to QuickBooks. So the short answer is no, we send invoices and we usually recommend to generate all invoices in the rigor system and then send them to QuickBooks. And again, same same reason. So your QuickBooks is a accounting system, but your rigor is your invoicing, correct, detailed uh, invoicing system with all the operational details about the equipment and the jobs. So the, sec the third question, where do we create a customer vendor first or should we create customer vendor first if we have an integration? Right, that actually depends on your current uh, operational processes and accounting uh, process as well, because sometimes your uh, customer, a new customer needs a due dil diligence or credit checks or something else. So you probably will do this first in your uh, accounting system or w whichever system you use for these kind of purposes. And uh, it depends on the operational processes as well, because uh, who creates or who communicates to customers first in your organization, either it's a sales department or operational department, or it comes everything through the accounting department, it may be different. So what we usually suggest to do is to create customers in rigor first, because in many cases, we've seen that sales team and sales department is the first uh, contact point uh, with customers. So, and they have access to rigor system, not to QuickBooks, right? So that's why sales guys will create new customers in rigor system. And then you can exchange this information to QuickBooks or simultaneously, you can create a new customer in, in QuickBooks online system. So it, it actually depends. And uh, there is no one solution. It, it depends on your um, purposes and your requirements. Great, thank you, Gleb. Uh, so the next one is number four, and it's also deals with invoices. So can an invoice in rigor be marked as paid automatically? So I think I know the answer, but go ahead, Gleb. <laughs> yeah, so actually the answer is no, uh, for the reason that rigor invoice has more uh, statuses than the QuickBooks one, because uh, in rigor, we allow you to manually track uh, the invoice progress. So either it's ha has been emailed to the customer or just uh, has been signed, has been sent out for a signature. So, and rigor doesn't have a billing, um, billing module. So we cannot automatically receive information about the payment of the invoice. So what we usually suggest to do, once your invoice is paid and QuickBooks uh, automatically marks this invoice as paid, we usually recommend go to the rigor system, locate this invoice and just change the status as paid to be consistent uh, in the status of the particular invoice. And I think I just wanted to add here is that why it is uh, beneficial is because you are in control. So when you are in QuickBooks, it's automatically paid. But then when you go back to Rigor, uh, it, it reminds you of, uh, you know, you're more managing invoices simply because it's important uh, to be aware of what's going on sometimes. So having received money is one thing. Another one is just to, to mark it as paid in Rigor manually. And it just kind of gives, also tracks the, uh, activity of a specific person. So if you have several people working in the AR uh, or AP department and that are using rigor for invoicing and changing statuses of them. So whoever who changes the status uh, of the specific invoice is marked on the background and you can see who actually marked uh, or changed the status of an invoice in the system. Right. So it, it increases the accountability uh, in that sense. 
So the number five question uh, is why my invoice does not export into QuickBooks Online? Yeah, sometimes it happens that uh, when you try to export invoice from there to QuickBooks, it gives you a message that uh, invoice cannot be exported. And uh, there will be uh, some explanation uh, of the reasons why it's not exported. So usually it doesn't export because some portion of the information on a specific invoice is not mapped between two systems. I can give you just a quick example. For example, you have created a new customer in Rigor and ran a job for, for him for, for it and then generated an in in invoice. Now you try to, invo to export this invoice, but this customer has not been set up on the QuickBooks system. So in this case, uh, Rigor will give you uh, a message that please create a new customer in QuickBooks first, mm -hmm. or you have entered a new service in your uh, Rigor system, but forgot to um, create the same service in QuickBooks. So when the information is not mapped or doesn't match, then we prevent the uh, information to be exported because it's just simply, we don't know where to, to map it to QuickBooks. So it means that you need to go through the details of mapping and see if the information is mapped. Yeah, so it all comes down to, uh, again, it's just making sure that the setup is done correctly. Thank you, Gleb. Uh, and the last but not least question uh, that we commonly hear from some of our existing clients, when, when is it a good time to integrate Rigor in, in QuickBooks? Quite often people want to have it the first thing done because a lot of it is driven by the accounting team. But there are some good and best practices that we recommend. So let go ahead. Yes, our best recommendation is just to uh, integrate Rigor with QuickBooks or uh, QuickBooks with Rigor at the later stages of the implementation project or at least uh, maybe a few weeks or one month after you start working live with, with the Rigor application and you have a sufficient amount of data in Rigor first to transfer over to QuickBooks. Under a sufficient amount of data, I mean that you probably need to have from five to 10 invoices for different customers generated. So it gives you a comfort and it gives you a clear understanding how the uh, invoicing process looks like in rigor and works in rigor. So you're familiar with the invoices in rigor. You know the whole process, how it's generated. You have a time to check all the details on the rigor invoices and compare it to those that are generated in QuickBooks manually. So, and after that, you, you give us a green light that guys, we are ready to send invoices there from rigor. They look good in rigor. So we want that, we want these invoices uh, in QuickBooks. And uh, in this case, when your rental fleet and rental items, rental revenue items are set up correctly and you are set on the list of clients. So when the information is established in the rigor system, then we can connect it to your QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks system. Perfect. Um, thank you, Gleb. So these are the common questions. There may be more. I don't see any questions coming from our audience today which means that some of them may have been answered already right here through this Q&A. If, however, uh, you will come up with any questions, so please do feel free to reach out to us. Uh, if you haven't been a user of Rigor, but would like to see how it's set up and uh, what it can do for you as a rentals or service company, reach out to us by phone or email or just fill out a form on the website and we'll just be back to you to, um, to book a, a session uh, and a demo session with you. We'll be more than happy to do that. And, uh, and answer any questions at the same time. So that's pretty much closes up the today's presentation. So we'd like to thank everyone for being with us today and learning about the Rigor and QuickBooks integration. So we're looking forward to helping you set it up or resolve any questions if you have uh, at any moment in time. So thank you very much. And we're looking forward to seeing you next week. Yes, thank you very much for being with us today. And uh, take care and we'll, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Thank you guys.